This was all extensively studied in glioblastoma, but what about the other tumor types like our lower, what we used to think of as low-grade tumors, IDH mutant tumors, or oligodendrogliomas? Well, similar things have been demonstrated in what we call low-grade gliomas or IDH mutant uh, non-codeleted tumors, so not oligodendrogliomas, but um, you know, our astrocytomas. Um, Multiple retrospective studies have similarly shown that extent of resection to have a benefit. I think one of the more interesting and compelling studies was this one from Jacola and all, which described this population-based study where different surgical strategies were compared in uh, some hospitals uh, that were actually in Norway, where um, one group favored uh, biopsy uh, up front versus another um, favoring you know, an extensive resection. Now, you know, this difference in, in um, sort of surgical strategy um, was certainly you know, prevalent uh, in the field prior to many of these studies. Um, you know, some of that came from this observation that low-grade tumors are you know, slow growing and often are difficult to detect lesions. And some of the old uh, thoughts were that these lesions are relatively stable. However, you know, more recently, longitudinal studies were actually you know, track volumetric growth of tumors over time demonstrate that low-grade gliomas, um, even though they're low-grade, do tend to grow over time. And shown here is sort of a, a data you know, chart from one of those studies where if you track and you count and you sort of volumetrically assess these tumors, that um, over, over the years, these things almost all uniformly grow. And they, at some point, um, many of them undergo malignant transformation where they are no longer sort of grade two indolent type tumor, but um, take on many of the features, you know, histologically, radiographically, and certainly clinically of high grade gliomas with rapid growth and poor prognosis. You know, one of the other things I think that's maybe a little bit lost in the weeds sometime when we're talking about, you know, low grade gliomas compared to high grade gliomas, um, you know, high grade gliomas obviously are massively uh, fatal. You know, people are surviving a year or two um, but the five-year and 10-year survival rate for what we call low-grade gliomas is really not that dramatically, you know, great either. Um, you know, we're still talking about a highly malignant and lethal disease, you know, in comparison to many other malignancies, you know, low-grade gliomas are still a, a relative poor performer. So I think all this needs to be uh, kept in mind. Um, this slide shows uh, the data from that study that I mentioned. Um, from, from Norway, where there's basically you know, these two hospitals where one um, preferred resection, another preferred biopsy. And when they looked you know, at their study, uh, the patients that you know, ended up at one hospital versus another tended to do better if they went to the hospital where the upfront res resection was preferred. And you can see the, these survival curves um, are, are non-overlapping. And a uh, significant benefit was there with this upfront uh, resection thing. Now, this type of study, I think, is really compelling because it's really hard to do a randomized trial to do this kind of thing, and this um, might be as close uh, that we could get um, uh, you know, in, in the sort of modern era um, <clears throat> uh, without doing a fully randomized trial, which you know many people would just simply not um, sign up for. So this data from the first one is really you know, akin to the sort of intention to treat sort of scenario where um, you know, the group in, in the one hospital were really more sort of resection forward versus the other one where biopsy was preferred. The other chart here shows what, uh, what happened with their survival comparing what treatment they actually got. You know, not every single patient that went to each hospital got you know, the, the sort of preferred treatment. But um, you know, data from this study showed that those patients that underwent early resection um, did significantly better than those who only got the biopsy and watchful waiting. So I think you know this um, uh, bears out you know uh, along survival lines, but also you know similar um, rates of surgical complications, uh, neurologic deficits, um, uh, uh, perioperative death, and malignant transformation. So you know it all goes to say that these, this uh, kind of comparative study was able to show this big benefit for patients undergoing um, an upfront resection as compared to biopsy. Um, you know, more recently, when taking molecular factors into account, you know, the presence of the IDH mutation 
um, certainly shows you know that tumor a group of tumors that behave better overall. Um, but the concept of the complete resection still uh, bears importance here in that number one, these tumors do tend to be more amenable to complete resection given their location. They're often circumscribed nature um, uh, in that when a complete resection is performed on, on these tumors, you know, there's something akin to a, a curate with some patients with some really long-term um, survival. Uh, in this particular study, you know, this, this same kind of uh, molecular analysis when comparing it to extended resection showed that really IDH wild type tumors are over here looking a little bit more like um, glioblastoma in terms of their, their outcome. Um, but even so, you know, the, the uh, image complete resection um, still, you know, was shown to confer that survival benefit. On the other hand, uh, oligodendroglioma tumors might be a little bit of a special case for extent of resection, although this is somewhat controversial. Again, these are those tumors that have IDH mutations and a 1p19q co-deletion. So we know that these tumors are among the more sensitive primary malignant brain tumors, uh, to, sensitive to chemotherapy and, and radiation. And uh, in, in some uh, really long-term studies from uh, the Karen Cross group, um, uh, has shown that you know, the, the combination of PCV chemotherapy and radiation uh, led to pretty uh, good long-term survival among these patients. Um, and uh, that just, I think, goes to show that these are a, a little more sensitive to chemotherapy and radiation. And when we compare that to what we see from data from the SEER database, it's actually harder to see a benefit from uh, gross total resection compared to just biopsy. Um, although it's a little bit, little bit murky if you um, dig a little bit uh, deeper to, to try to understand why patients might have subtotal resections or no, no surgery. And, and you know, clearly there would be a difference there, but it does point to an idea that, you know, um, again, avoiding neurologic morbidity from surgery um, in a tumor that's a little more chemotherapy or radiation sensitive might, might be a good, a good trade-off in terms of um, overall survival and outcome. One of the issues though, is you don't always know that a tumor is an oligodendroglioma based on its initial imaging. And um, you know, if you're in there deciding, well, are you going to resect this all or not, um, you know, the, I think other considerations uh, end up taking uh, priority. But there are some, you know, some ways to try to differentiate if something might be an oligo versus uh, an astrocytoma. And some of that uh, are, are some of the things that are shown here, like cortical involvement, calcifications, uh, a little bit less distinct borders. Um, they tend to be cortically based, which I think you guys discussed in one of your um, previous talks, and they can sort of occasionally, although somewhat rarely, thin overlying bone. And the age range is maybe a little bit different for oligodendrogliomas than low-grade astrocytomas. But again, none of these things are 100% reliable. So we're often, you know, faced with what we think is a, you know, is a, is a primary uh, glial tumor. And if we're going in there, we're often thinking about how to remove it all completely, um, sort of regardless of, of what it ultimately ends up being. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.